Hi, welcome back to ToddFun.com. Uh, got another little project I'm working on, uh, trying to get it done kind of quickly, uh, and it has to do with my uh, spoke POV kit here. Uh, this is the Persistence of View uh, bicycle image kit that you can get from Adafruit, uh, where you can actually program different images, and then as you ride your bike, you see um, graphical uh, images on your on your wheels, sometimes fixed, sometimes animated, whichever you choose. Uh, if you want to see more about this particular project and the build of it, you know, go back a couple uh, blog blog posts, and you'll see uh, uh, like a seven, six or seven part um, posting on on building it. But what I'm coming into now is uh, is in order to test it, once you program it, you don't want to put it on your bike; you want to spin it up, and it's got to spin pretty fast for the image for the persistence of vision um, image to show. Um, and in the past, if you've seen the previous blogs, I use this to spin it up. And it works, but it's kind of a pain to always get up and drill and, uh, and set it up. So uh, somebody was uh, fixing a, uh, a motor that they had for an air pump, and they, uh, they couldn't fix the motor. And they brought it to me, and they said that they just didn't want it, and they thought maybe I could do something with it, maybe fix the motor. And sure enough, I was able to fix the motor, and I'm going to use this uh, to spin the tire, and I'll put a light switch and a little case for this to sit in something to adjust this uh, up against the tire um, so I can control how hard it pushes on the tire with the shaft uh, and that will make for an easy little uh, just to essentially just to plug in uh, plug in a, uh, a cord and flip a light switch and this will be in a protected box uh, and uh, you can spin your tire up uh, real quick and check your image uh, not without getting out the drill now this came from uh, an air pump for like a mattresses uh, so it's, a, it's called a universal motor uh, you can run on AC and DC. A uh, particular one was running on, DC, on AC. And what had happened with this is um, they allowed it to, well, it's got to have airflow to keep it cool. And uh, I suppose the mattress was full, so it couldn't push enough air or something, and it overheated. And uh, they thought it had burned up. But what had happened, and so this, this blog I'm going to cover a bit about how, to, how I fixed this, and then the rest of it will be uh, making a uh, contraption uh, to spin up the tire. So how to fix this was this uh, has brushes. Um, they are inside of, of there with this little copper wire coming across. So that's, a, that's a brush uh, down in there. And what had happened is this plastic part, let me get something to point with. This, uh, this plastic bit right here got so hot that it melted a little bit down inside and when that melted uh, this brush couldn't float anymore and it has to float and apply, apply its pressure to the stick to the commutator down there um, I'll show you a picture of a brush this is a brush in an electric motor it's got a spring on the back this is sort of a carbon material um, very similar to like say uh, the lead in a pencil, pencil lead, it's about the same, it's like soft pencil lead. In fact, you could even use it just like pencil. It will actually draw just like pencil lead. It's that soft. And uh, its job is to, de is to deliver the electric current down to that commutator. It's kind of hard to get that on film. And there's a little device in there you see turning, that's a commutator. And the brushes, uh, when they're down in there, they uh, allow the electric current to change from one of those little segments to another little segment as the motor turns, changing where the field is at in the motor. And uh, this can spin at pretty high torque um, and at high speed. And so they're kind of nice to have uh, for projects like this. But this little brush was stuck in there um, because it had melted the plastic when it got overheated and it couldn't come down no more. So then even though it cooled off, uh, it couldn't apply a current to the, to the commutator anymore. Uh, so what I, all I had to do is it wasn't damaged that much, I just had to take them out, force them out, and then clean out some of that melted plastic and get some of the melted plastic off of the brush and then they drop right back in and uh, it works good. So we'll show this working, it's all uh, functional now, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, building, uh, showing it. I'm just going to take short little snippets of, of the different parts I'm going to build so that this will mount on the bottom over here and then just spin it from down here with the light switch. That'll be the whole post, but 
let's take a look at this thing spinning up in a test jig. Okay, I've got this uh, mounted in a little vice table vice here. Um, I've got your standard outlet cord, 120 volts. I uh, got this off a of microwave. So whenever you tear apart stuff, uh, keep the keep a lot of the stuff. A lot of stuff can be reused. This is a real handy. You don't have to go out and buy a cord. I just have bits left over. I'll plug that in, and we'll see that uh, we have a good working universal motor. So it makes a heck of a noise. Um, I guess you can't really see it spin without something on the tip, but it works. Okay, I'm just mocking something up here. I figured I'd share. I found a piece of metal tubing on a shaft. Um, basically, this will go through here, and I'm just going to weld either side uh, a couple little, a couple little pieces of bracket on that, so that this is spins. Um, once that's done and welded to that base, then I'll weld this piece of sheet just straight across to put a bead there. And this will effectively rise and lower, raise and lower, by a, a set, a, should I put a big handle screw here that'll screw down and as it screws through, it'll lift this plate up. And on the motor, uh, the motor will be uh, bolted to the plate through some brackets on the front and back, and then this will just come up and contact that. Uh, I think I'm just going to mock it up like that and weld it up some, and then um, I'll, before I actually finish it down onto the in its final home there, I'll I'll build some sort of a containment box around here. I may even try and figure out how I can possibly put a, a fan on the back of this so that maybe uh, I can keep the most of the front and most of the back open and have a little bit of a, a fan blowing through there. But I'm not quite sure how I get a fan onto that onto that back of that shaft. I, might be able to get something to stick in that little slot there and spin a fan. Um, be tough though. Okay, we're set up for doing some welding on this project. Uh, quick tour of that. Got the fan over there, which is, I'll go open the garage door and that'll blow all the gases and smoke out. Um, have the welding bench rolling combo cart here, which I have an earlier blog on. You can go back and see how I built that. It does gas, it does cutting, oxygen and acetylene, and it does MIG on this top right here. That folds up. At any rate, um, won't be using the gas today. Got the grinder ready. I haven't put a blog up on this, but this is a uh, this is your Harbor Freight uh, MIG welder here, and then that's the plasma cutter down there. I converted this cart so that the plasma cutter would fit on the bottom. Um, and then it, all the hoses and cords and everything would, would wrap up real nice. And then it actually has two tanks in back. The large one is for like mild steel on the MIG welder and the small one is, and that's mixed gas, and the small one is pure argon. And that's uh, when this thing converts to aluminum, uh, I can use 100% argon for the aluminum welding. And other than that, uh, we'll be doing the plasma cutting here. I think I'll see if the camera can film some of that. And then my pieces are all measured and ready to make the brackets to hold the fan and the motor um, together and then that will get welded up some more so stay tuned
Okay, here's our bits that we just finished cutting, these three pieces. Uh, this piece is going to be to hold the fan, so this is a bracket that the fan can screw into. And that's going to get welded right there. And then these two pieces, this is a front bracket, that will get welded in right there, like that. This is going to be essentially the hinge. I've ground off some of the uh, chrome. That will go on there. And then this will roll when I turn a nut, tightening things up. Okay, this is a bracket that's going to be for holding this rotating uh, axle. I can take this off and on if I have to take the motor off. That's just a couple of brackets on the side so I can put a top on this thing. Well, we're a little bit closer. That's going to be the way the bracket mounts on the tire and then this will be the adjustment handle. Okay, I'm finished uh, with this hack where I uh, used to salvage the motor and some other uh, salvage components uh, to spin up this uh, wheel with the spoke POV boards uh, so you can uh, program uh, the boards and see your image uh, nice and comfortable uh, work at a bench without having it on a bicycle which could fall over and so forth. So first I'll just demonstrate it working so you see how it's going to be uh, and then I'll go over some of the electronics. Um, uh, that I put in the box. Some close-ups. Uh, what's going to see is you're going to see uh, a pie with some steam coming off of it. I was at the Maker Faire Phoenix uh, yesterday and I had this as one of the displays uh, for a test rig for the spoke POVs and uh, uh, we were allowing people to draw images and then we would uh, scan that and upload those images right, right in front of them for them and they were pretty impressed with that. And uh, one little girl, she she really wanted to have a pie, so this will be a pie. <laughs> Thank you.
not so sure if that shows up or not with the camera because the camera pretty fast shutter um, so it might not look like much but oh well on to uh, what's in the box here that actually allows us to uh, to spin this up I've unplugged it and uh, we'll just uh, see if we can zoom in uh, this is uh, it's basically just a metal box to hold the electronics in it so no one would accidentally stick their fingers in high voltages. This is a uh, variable speed, uh, uh, actually a variable dimmer for a torch lamp that I salvaged out of a broken torch lamp mechanism. Uh, this is to adjust the height, so like if I do that the wheel starts to free flow because it disengages the motor. But that way you can quickly adjust for different size uh, wheels. It'll go up and down several inches if you put a smaller wheel in here um, or a larger wheel. Um, this is the fan that uh, we originally were we originally were running the fan um, using uh, uh, this hack to get the, the 16 volts DC uh, but I now uh, have converted it to uh, a transformer which is in here. And we'll take this box off and there's actually I designed it, I basically stitch welded it, this box together after plasma cutting the pieces and uh, We'll go ahead and take the cover off and see the insides. Okay, we've taken the T-bar out that controls the height and now the lid comes off. And that's the box, you might have seen some footage of it getting welded up, just stitched together real easy. Um, and inside, I've got this unplugged right now, so it's no, this would otherwise have high voltage on it. But this is the dimmer that you would find inside of a of a torch lamp, really handy, variable, that controls the speed of this salvaged motor over here. Um, and then this is that transformer, I might have had it earlier in the video, it's a 12 volt DC transformer that I found out of some junk, and that's what I'm using to power this. This was actually uh, the bar for the fork of a bicycle, and then the nut that's for that fork is down here, where it welded to this base plate, so if the lid were on it, and you would see that this shaft of the motor here comes up and just it in, it in, in basically makes contact and it makes it so I can control that pressure just right now this is this has got some voltage on it I wouldn't want it to slop it around but I'll go ahead and plug it in and just show it running on spinning the tire but I don't want to touch or short anything out but everything's got uh, shrink wrap on everything so other than the bottom of that uh, dimmer board it would be hot and it does not touch any metal right now so it's safe and uh, and we'll just go ahead and carefully turn this up and the fan kicks in right away because it gets its DC but I have to have more in order to turn that motor over more of the dimmer power But that's the innards. So that's it. Uh, this project is done. Like I said, it was at the Maker Fair. It was a lot of fun. My daughter uh, was uh, doing all the imaging uh, that, pe that people were drawing and uploading it while I was talking to people and explaining them these test rigs that we build uh, for these Adafruit uh, POV boards. Uh, so it was really great. And, and if you ever need to build something like that, there's lots of ways of hacking them and making them work. So thanks for joining.